Hello, I'm Nancy Jutton, and I'm here with my husband and business partner, Steve Jutton. Say hi, Steve. Hello, everyone. Thanks for being here. So um, we have a special presentation planned for you today, especially if you're a financial advisor who works with clients. You probably know that the work is more than just about the money. It's really about life. It's really rewarding to guide clients to plan to fund their private school for their kids or to anticipate and fund their bar mitzvah or make provisions for college or weddings or other exciting plans that they have on the horizon. But sometimes those, it's not all wine, roses, chickens, and unicorns. Sometimes circle of life issues come up and they're not that easy to deal with and maybe even not that much fun. It could be things like death, disability, disempowerment, um, divorce, divorce, uh, diminished mental capacity, or even worse, death. And the truth is that our clients' darkest moments truly can be the advisor's finest hour if we just shift our perspective and change the way we have those conversations. So as I mentioned, I'm Nancy Jutton. I am the co-founder of Life Goes On Roadmap, and I'm a champion for guiding families to get ahead of life before life happens. And I'm here with my amazing husband, Steve, who is a certified financial planner and the CEO of his own RIA and someone who also shares this belief. He's the author of several books about investing and using your money wisely. And he's got an extraordinary career working with thousands of families combined with his entire team. And they know a little bit about dealing with circle of life issues and happy moments. And so I'm really glad that we are here today because what we're here to talk about is how to foster resiliency for our clients when bad news is the order of the day. We're also going to talk about how to foster resilience for ourselves as advisors when bad news is the order of the day. And we're going to share a few resources to lend support to those of you who could really use it as you're dealing with these kinds of circle of life issues because we'd like to get guide you to get ahead of hardship situations before they become crises so that life can be a little bit easier for you and your clients in the dark moments. So how does that sound, Steve? Good. Sounds like a good, a good session. Let's, let's, let's go. Great. Well, you know, I'm an avid reader and I know you are too. And I read a book the other day by June Didion called J Joan Didion rather. It's called the year, my year of magical thinking. And it's a book that she read. She wrote, after being visited by two very dramatic events, a brain aneurysm for her daughter and the sudden death of her husband within days of each other. And one of the things she writes about in her book is it all started on an ordinary day and then everything changed. And isn't it something that that's kind of the way it is with life? That's how it happens without warning and sometimes with, by complete and total surprise, everything, life as we know it isn't what it was the day before, and that really can give our advisors a lot to think about and a lot to consider as they deal with clients that are in crisis. So um, Steve, I know you've had the occasion to work with clients around the country who have had these kinds of situations happen. So what are some of the ways that you can engage with your clients to help them through it so that you can have a powerful conversation that could really be of terrific service? Sure. So I'll, I'll give you some thoughts and then maybe we can role play a little bit and give people an idea of how that works. Would that be okay? Yeah. So the first thing I tell my young advisors is when somebody comes to you and gives you that kind of news, d divorce or disability or um, a, a tragic um, medical prognosis or something, um, what I assure them is first make sure that it's about them and not about you. And the, the banal comment of I'm so sorry is really about you and not about them. So I want our, client, our clients to know that we're thinking about them first and not us. So as an example, you might say something like, oh, oh Don, that must be so difficult for you. I know how much you cared for. Or uh, So the first thing is make sure it's about them. The second item that I tell our advisors is to make sure that you don't move into transaction mode too quickly because the tendency is for us to get away from the emotional part of it because it makes us uncomfortable and get right into problem solving. So, so first, be empathetic and make it all about them. Second, make sure you stay with it long enough so that you find out what's really going on with the person. So let's do a little role play with that if we could, okay, Nance? Sure. 
Okay, so pretend you're you just you have some bad news that you're sharing with me as your financial advisor. So Steve, I just found out that someone in my family and my close family is suffering from diminished mental capacity and it's really giving our family a serious run for the money about more than the money to be honest with you. Oh, Nancy, uh, it, it must be so difficult for you. It is difficult. And I'm, I'm just sort of at wit's end about how to do my life and how to tend to the situation. And I'm just not sure how to pull off everything that's required in order for me to do everything all at once. I'm just beyond my ability to cope. So what, what do you mean at, at wit's end? Tell me a little bit more about that, if you would. Well, on the one hand, I'm trying to run my business and run my life. And on the other hand, I'm getting urgent calls from people saying that so-and-so can't find her keys and can't drive the car and can't seem to multitask and that there are bills that haven't been paid that need to be paid. And I'm not exactly sure where to find the documents I need so that I can move things along or provide some help. Those are the kinds of things I'm dealing with. So I hear you saying that it's the, it's all that chaos that comes with it. It's the how to deal with the, the stress and strain of somebody's declining mental ability and uh, the chaos that comes with that. Did I get that right? Did, did yeah. I that? So what, let's just think about this for a minute, Nancy. What is it that you need right now? What, what is it that you need? What do I need? <sighs> so there you go. We, we, can, we can stop there. Yeah, I'd like to turn back the clock and have this not be a situation that we have to be dealing with, but that's not very realistic. Yeah, and some people are going to say that. But you see, the, the, the example here is to make sure that you – uh, uh, you hear the person, and not once did I say how I felt. Did you notice that? I didn't say I'm sorry or I feel bad for you or whatever. It's all about you. And it takes a lot of practice because we get into this mode of saying I'm sorry for you or I'm sorry for your loss, which is heartfelt but not helpful. So make it all about them. And you also notice that in that conversation, I did a little bit of reflecting back and, and said, so I hear what you're saying is that it's the chaos of trying to take care of somebody in the diminishing mental capacity. Did I get that right? And that encourages the person to keep talking. And then this conversation could go on for a while. And then I said, so Nancy, what do you need? And let's see what it is that she has to say. So the key issues there for an advisor are make it all about them. And second, um, a delay transaction kinds of stuff about being a problem solver or let's fix it until much later. Does that, does that help? Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it's super helpful because based on the conversations I've had with advisors, some have told me that they're somewhat uncomfortable having these, these having it come up that something unfortunate has happened, that it makes them uncomfortable. They're not sure what to say or how to say it. And you're giving us some very specific things to do to make it all about the client and take yourself out of it and really step up to be more of a holistic planner who's not about the money, but who's about being of service in a more complete way. Right, and one of, the, one of the items you and I have talked about, all of that is correct, one of the items you and I have talked about is that the advisor needs to be okay with being uncomfortable. And, and we'll talk about that in a minute, and, and that's one of, maybe one of the first things that I would say to any advisor is, look, these conversations are gonna happen. Wishing that they don't happen with clients is not realistic. And so be ready for it. And one of the first things that you can do is have a mindset that says, I, okay, it's going to be uncomfortable. I'm going to be uncomfortable, but it ain't about me. It's about them. So get over it <laughs> and make sure you're focusing on the client and not on you. Mm -hmm. How's that? That's good. That's very good. So, you, you know, you discovered a book that helps us raise the condolence bar one comment at a time. Can you tell us more about that? Yes. Um, one of my colleagues' name is Nancy Marmalejo, and she wrote a book called Don't Say That, Say This, Navigating Grief in a World in a Loss, Navigating Grief and Loss in a World of Social Media. And it's an excellent book. It's available on Kindle and Amazon. But I downloaded this book because like Nancy Marmalejo was saying, you only have to look to your Facebook feed to see that every single day life is happening to people that are in our friends and community. And sometimes you see this long string of, I'm so sorry for your loss. I'm sending love and light your way. And it all starts to sound really hollow and not very 
um, heartfelt when it's just one right after the other. And so Nancy's whole idea is that we need to go beyond sorry for your loss and we need to stop using platitudes as a rote tool to help people deal with things. Like she says, don't say things like, you'll get over it. Let's not focus on the negative. Stop dwelling on your loss. Find something to be happy about. Think of all you have to be grateful for. We've seen these kinds of things in social media every single day. And you know what? We also see these things eye to eye, knee to knee, and toe to toe when we're meeting with people across our desks, trying to guide them through difficult situations. And I think reading her book, Don't Say That, Say This, Navigating Grief and Loss in a World of Social Media is a really good wake-up call for all of us because uh, life is going to happen and it's not all going to be happy stuff. And if we can learn to customize the way we respond in a way that shows how much we, we empathize and have compassion and um, really appreciate the magnitude of the difficulty, the more connected we're going to be to those clients in the most profound moments of their lives. Good, yeah. And so that, that, that book title is Don't Say That, Say This, and I love that, of course, yeah. Yes, I highly recommend it. And her, her, her quote is, um, she says, let's help raise the condolence bar one comment at a time. And I think we all can take that uh, flag and wave it and see what we can do to make it personal. And what's beautiful about her book is she actually has simple little templates that you can customize to the situation that it may be a bit formulaic, but when you can say, oh, I remember meeting your dad and he was such a generous guy. I remember the story he told about and how he made everyone laugh. You know, Find a way to say something meaningful and personal so that the people know that they've been seen, heard, and understood. Right. I know you're a big believer in books. Do you have any other suggestions in this regard? Oh, yeah, for sure. I've actually been studying up about this over the last couple of years. And, you know, there's all kinds of things we can find in the trade press and the financial advising world where we can learn very theoretical things. But, you know, sometimes just going to a bestseller list is a great idea. And one of my favorite books that I've read on the topic about, um, about getting ready for life, it's called Love Your Life to Death by Yvonne Heath. And she, it, the book is How to Plan and Prepare for End of Life So You Can Live Fully Now. And what I really love about this book as a resource for advisors and also a resource for clients is that it juxtaposes the scenarios between a family that has had important conversations and knows the lay of the land against families whose heads were in the sand and chose not to do anything to think about what might be. Because she's basically saying that when you have the courage to have these bold conversations, you can guide your family through difficult times with love and grace and compassion without conflict. But if you don't, you run the risk that there can be hurt feelings and disappointments and disinheritances and all kinds of things. And people can go 10 rounds over who gets the lawnmower. And this is not what any of us want. So if your desire is to love your life to death, this is a great book to help people open their eyes to um, what they really want and get some important conversations started. Another book that I'm a big fan of, as I mentioned, this whole issue of diminished mental capacity, I think every few seconds around the world, someone is being diagnosed with some form of dementia or Alzheimer's. And my colleague, Angela, Brig Angela Brigance, has written a novel called Finding Rose. And what I love about this book is it's a novel that tells the story about how a family starts noticing that one of their members is losing their keys and being very disorganized and um, maybe not getting dressed properly or being incredibly forgetful. And she weaves in clinical terms throughout this book, but it's in the context of the story we're telling about Rose. And so it's a very non-confronting way to introduce the possibility that someone in your family might be suffering from early onset of dementia or something worse. And it gives you wonderful resources and also ways to talk to your loved one who can't seem to remember things without being super confronting about how you do that. 
I'm finding that this is particularly useful to me given what I'm dealing with in my life. Another book that's a classic is by Randy Pouch. It's called The Last Lecture. Sure, I, I know that one. I've read that, yep. And I think one of the things that he says in this book that really got to me is, you know, none of us want to have these conversations. We'd rather be doing just about anything, washing our hair, <laughs> cleaning, cleaning the stove. But basically, one of the things he says is, time is all you have, and then one day you find out that maybe you have a whole lot less than you thought. And so if everything happens typically on an ordinary day, it's such an important thing to make it priority to get what's clear and important to you shared with the people in your family. And so those are among my favorite books. And then for those, you know, I know you've dealt with this in your practice, Steve, the, the sudden loss of a spouse. And so there's a book called The Joke's Over, You Can Come Back to Me Now. It's written by a woman, uh, Lori Burroughs grad, who was married happily to the love of her life for 47 years, and they went on a vacation in Mexico, and he just died in her arms by surprise. So she, they had a very funny way of communicating. And so the book is actually kind of uh, funny and poignant. But if, if, if you're an advisor who is dealing with a wife who's lost her spouse, this is, book has a very refreshing take on how to navigate the months or perhaps years after the loss to find some humor in it, find some coping strategies, and um, fight, feel as though you're not alone in the process. Good. What's the title of that one? It's called The Joke's Over, You Can Come Back to Me Now. And right. you know, seven out of 10 women will survive their partners. And you think, well, gosh, it, only the women that are going to read this book are people that have just suffered a loss. And I have not suffered a loss, but I found the crisp writing and her whole approach really helpful because in this work that I do, I seem to be running into a lot of people that are suffering loss. And I want to have more compassion and I want to have more. Um, um, presence to acknowledge what it is that people are dealing with and to not go transactional on folks and not not to get into problem solving but to know how to um, just be where they are because you know whether it's a divorce or a death it could be 18 months or longer before people can navigate through that path you cannot hurry grief you know you just can't right and I, 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 I that's part of the message there that we try to give to uh, advisors is the act of listening and being present and sharing books and resources and conversation starters to, to help our clients get through it. But that's a real important message there too. You, you really can't hurry through, group, uh, through grief. Well, and if I had one more book recommendation to make, it's one I found just, just the other day. It's called Find the Good, Unexpected Life Lessons from a Small Town Obituary Writer. And what I loved about this book was many things, but Heather Lindy, the author, she says, we're all writing our own obituary every day by how we live. The best news is that there's still time for additions and revisions before we go to press. And I think for all of us, whatever work we do, how can we raise the bar in how we do everything so that our clients feel seen, heard, and understood? And that our clients also leave a roadmap for their family just in case something crazy or random should happen to them because crazy and random things happen on ordinary days all around the country, all around the world, and it could happen to us. And that's a sobering thought, but it's also something important to consider. So that kind of takes us in a little bit of a different direction. So it's, it's better for both the advisor and the clients if we can get ahead of this stuff uh, before it happens, right? So, um, well, well, wouldn't wouldn't you like that as an advisor to be able to guide your clients to get ahead of things before life actually hits the fan? <laughs> oh yeah. So uh, there's a couple of things that we do and other advisors do along that line. Let me just make a couple of suggestions, if I may. Obviously, one of them is to make sure that clients' estate documents are current, and not just say, "Do you have a will?" but to say, "Have you talked about it with your kids?" Or, or do you agree on the executor? Or really dive into it a little bit. And then another one is something that uh, was created by a recent FINRA rule, uh, which is the trusted contact. And the trusted contact rule talks about making sure that if the advisor 
sees or senses diminished mental capacity, that they have the right to contact somebody in the client's life ahead of time or, um, uh, and, and, and let them know before it gets any worse. Now, this was directed only at broker-dealers, but a lot of RIAs are, ex RIAs are excluded from that because it's a broker-dealer. So one of, our, one of our colleagues created something that she calls a financial directive which basically duplicates what's done in the broker-dealer rule 4512. And it just says to the client here, if we sense that there's something going on with you and diminished mental capacity, uh, can we contact somebody and who is that? And then the client signs off on it. And finally, I know this is gonna be no surprise to many of you, but people need to get organized. It is not just organized in the sense of having estate documents, that's important, but also having all their other critical personal financial information ready to go, even such things as digital assets. But you know, make sure your estate documents are current, obviously. Beneficiary designations are up to date. Uh, account numbers are written down. Passwords are written down in some way to do all that. Because as you know, Nancy, the chaos that happens when somebody can no longer access that information it's just tragic and it prolongs any kind of a, of a grieving period and makes it so much more difficult for people. So you and I created this, this item called the Life Goes On Roadmap just for this purpose, right? Yes, we absolutely did. So tell us a little bit about it. So what is Life Goes On Roadmap and, and how are advisors and other professionals using it? Tell us a little bit about it. Well, um, let's do a little show and tell, shall we? That makes it easy. Uh, Life Goes On Roadmap is a system of personal financial information organization and it is it is designed to help families start conversations about their wishes their practical their household operations their um, where they keep their important documents so that if something should happen to one or the other in the family the other can still drive and have the keys to go wherever they want to go um, for advisors who want to guide their clients to be more resilient in the face of a challenge or difficulty, it's great to compel your clients to use a system like this before life hits the fan because then they have an awareness of where things are and how to use them so that they can unlock the keys to their life. As an advisor, it can be a very powerful gap analysis tool, for example. You know, there are 16 road stops that you can take along this game that we call the Life Goes On Roadmap. And if you simply ask your clients to please um, fill out the top three sections that would give them or their family the biggest run for the money if something crazy or random should happen, and that you want to discuss that the next time you meet, that will be a great way to get them into action and to come back to you and say, you know what? I don't think I have umbrella liability. Maybe it's time to add long-term care insurance to my portfolio. Or finally have the conversation about it, yes. Or something. But if, if you get your, con your clients talking about these kinds of things, you can go deeper with your client and make suggestions to help fill in any gaps. It's also a powerful con conversation starter between the families, the, the younger generation and the older generation. And it absolutely can be a game changer for everyone because it's not a matter of what has gone unsaid. It's, it's what epic adventure you just discovered that now you know what you're, you're up to. So um, it includes a game board to make it fun, a digital organizer so that you can update, you can save, store, update, and share your information with the relevant people that need to know. And um, it also includes a guidebook that explains the rationale for why this is important in the first place. So that's essentially what the tool is. And uh, yeah, I think the second question you asked me is how are advisors using it? Right. Well, we have a number of advisors across the country that are using it and sharing it generously with their clients. And so a couple of examples, you mentioned the importance of estate planning and having a financial directive. One of our a financial advisors has asked has clients with assets under management and and during their semi court semi annual reviews they touch on the importance of estate planning they ask the client if they would like to sign a financial directive and in that same meeting they say we care about you and your family and we want to make sure that you have access to everything that's needed in case it's becomes a requirement 
and they offer this as a gift to their clients during that meeting. Um, another of our clients is an estate planning attorney whose job it is to help prepare those essential documents. And at the final meeting, when he's handing off the paperwork of his completed documents, clients always say, what else do I need to do to get my life and death ducks in a row? And now he's able to say, you need Life Goes On Roadmap to manage the practical nitty gritty household details so that there aren't any missed steps just in case. And they're overwhelmingly happy to receive it. Another of our clients is a, uh, owns a number of senior care homes in Hawaii. And she has heard over the years many arguments and conflicts and disagreements among families, and she wants to help those families get ahead of it. So now when people move into their new senior care homes, she offers the Life Goes On Roadmap to the baby boomer child that's moving the parent in and also to the parent so that they can have these conversations and it can be a way that they can um, bridge any gaps that need to be discussed, especially during this important time of transition. That strikes me as a really good idea because you have two generations, right? Mm -hmm. That might even be something an advisor could suggest to uh, to, to a client is uh, maybe create uh, complete one of these for yourself and your family, and also maybe one for your parents. So it's a good idea. I like that. And then another of our clients is a real estate professional, and she supports families in downsizing from their family home to their 55 and older scenario. And during times of transition, you know, six weeks after you move into your new place, when you know where all the valuables are and you've got all the art on the wall and you're feeling really comfortable in your new space, what a perfect time to inventory the rest of your valuables. So if some crazy thing like, like a burglary should happen, you could help those clients get ahead of it and be able to make a claim knowing that they had whatever they had and had proof of it because the life goes on roadmap, show them the way. So those are some of the ways that you can use it. I know you use it in your practice, don't you? We do. Uh, a couple, let's see, last year, I guess, was in 2018. We, we decided to make it available to all of our clients, all of our existing clients. And, um, and we absorbed the cost of it. And so we, we got everybody up to speed. And now every time a new client comes on board, we simply include that as part of our service. It's, it's very much uh, kind of a best practice for us that everybody does that. And it isn't the first thing that we do with them, but we do on the second or third meeting. We, we warn them ahead of time how, that they're going to need to do that and that we're going to be walking them through it over the next year. And if people want to get it done sooner than that, that's fine. But just as you suggested, we have them start with the low-hanging fruit, the stuff that would be the um, most difficult to keep up to speed if somebody, somebody wasn't around to complete it. But it's part of our practice now. In fact, we even have it sitting at, at our Get Acquainted meetings before somebody becomes a client. And inevitably, they pick it up and they say, what's this? So we use it in both ways. We use it as a client attracting item and a way to distinguish us. And we also use it as a best practice with our clients. And, and what's their reaction? It, it's very interesting. I, I, I was telling you the other day, I've never had anybody say this is a bad idea, right? <laughs> now, they may not get to it right away, and we have to nag them. But in, in fact, uh, it's a great idea and it, it, it distinguishes us from everybody else because there's nothing else out there like that and advisors just don't typically do that because it's not transaction oriented. It's, it's oriented towards being a holistic planner and giving people uh, the, the, the true experience of having somebody have in their back. Mm -hmm. So we get, we get lots of bonus points for doing that and uh, we certainly uh, gives us something to talk about regularly with clients. And uh, again, I've never had anybody say this is a bad idea. And it's part of our job is to make sure that they do stuff they don't want to do. It's like getting life insurance or umbrella liability insurance or should, making sure that their uh, deductibles are okay on their home policy or whatever. It's just part of what we need to do. Didn't you have a story about someone who was an avid boater who used one of the spreadsheets to explain to his wife? Right. So uh, one of my clients ha is an avid fisherman and, uh, and, and an engineer, and he was very concerned that his wife would not know how to uh, turn on the boat and do all the things that you need to do with it. So he actually supplemented his Life Goes On Roadmap by filling in lots of details about what to do on how to run the boat and even how to maintain it. You know, this is when we need to have it cleaned, and this is who I go to for it, and this is my 
electrician and this is my uh, this is my boat mechanic and this is who cleans the boat and he does all that so he he actually created a, i think a separate section on that then we had another client that actually did a video showing his wife on how to take care of the boat and it all was prompted by this concern about if i'm not around to take care of the boat and my wife then the boat doesn't get taken care of and somebody's got to do it and somebody needs to be involved. So it prompted him to do um, both clients to do something with it. One wrote it all down and one did a video on it. <laughs> well, and that's the beauty of it is there, it's 16 road stops and 16 uh, pages of a spreadsheet, if you will, but there's enough flexibility in it so you can customize it for your, your boat, your vacation home, your um, whatever the case may be. And so, Folks often ask, like, why is this, how is this different from other systems that you might find out there? And I want to sort of address that. One is, is it's a fun way for an advisor to stand apart, invite referrals, and create stickier client relationships. And most importantly, get those clients ahead of life before life happens because resiliency in the face of challenge is a really big issue. And that's why we're talking today. The other thing that I think is a important differentiator is it's it's playful and fun versus gloom and doom we've actually turned getting organized into a game to win instead of a task to put off until later and you can become an i'm ready for anything road tripper who's ready for anything if you just accept your mission and proceed our system is more about life than about death which is really important one of the things that we are i've got one on here too uh, if I can jump in here, sort of interrupting, is the accountability portion. Some people just need to be held accountable. And if as an advisor, you're holding people accountable and saying, okay, the next time we meet, you're going to have completed these sections and they say yes. I think that's a great, that's a great way, a great role for me to play as an advisor is to hold them accountable. So that's one of the kind of one of the features of, of this program or one of the system is that clients will get stuff done if we hold them accountable for it. That's why they hire us. Well, and we also, you and I have done um, get it done days where we've guided scores and scores of clients to complete this. And we actually offer those replays to everyone who enjoys the system so that they can choose a date on their calendar to get this done and know that there are experts supporting them every step of the way. For the advisor, that's a benefit because they don't necessarily have to spend their valuable time doing that, knowing that we will do it for them. And we will always encourage that client to go back to their advisor for any follow-up that's required. The other thing that's really important about it that I think sets it apart from some others that you might take a look at is ours is not a subscription model or a vault where you pay something now and pay something every year forever after, amen. Um, ours is a simple, easy investment that you make modest amount of money and you make that investment one time and as long as you're in our system we will continue to nudge you to get your roadmap completed so that you'll never feel as though you are alone so um, many many benefits to um, to that so if you're interested in taking a closer look at life goes on roadmap as a tool to use in your practice or as something you might want to use yourself personally you can go to www.bit.ly forward slash deeper service, all one word, and we will, um, there's all the information posted there so you can decide if this is something you'd like to do. Because what some advisors will do is November being the month of gratitude, they'll just make the decision to send the Life Goes On Roadmap to the doorstep of every one of their very, very important clients with, with their compliments. Or some might decide to do that as a New Year's gift idea to start the New Year off right when people are really tuned into getting organized. And others just might want to have inventory in their office to hand off to clients at the perfect moment when it makes perfect sense. And, it's and it will be most appreciated. So there's a lot of flexibility in how you use it, but when you do use it, the client will appreciate it. And what we've noticed is that clients really do talk about this to their family and friends. And then they say, where did you get that? And invariably they say, I got it from my advisor. And then that, that could bring a new client back to you, the advisor who can enroll them into your deeper service and all of a sudden you have a new client with assets under management and you're off to the races with a deeper book of business. So many, many benefits. So 
we came together today to talk about how to get your clients, how to talk about, we were talking about resiliency in the face of difficulty. So Steve, you want to take a shot at recapping what we shared? And Sure. So for an, an advisor, there's, there's many levels of this. One of them is being resilient yourself or as an advisor. And the best way to do that is to be prepared for these conversations. So it's a mindset thing. Be prepared. Uh, something else an advisor might want to do is check out some of these resources so that you're ready for it. A third item that an advisor might do is help their clients to become resilient and be ready in the face of this. So that, uh, and that's being prepared. That's a state documents and a life goes on roadmap and a financial directive and those kinds of items. And then we talked about how to, how to interact with a client at the moment that the client tells you the, the horrible news. And part of resiliency is being prepared with that dialogue and being ready to have that conversation with the client. And remember, I said the three keys were one, it's not about you. Two, to, to make sure that you don't move into transaction or problem solving too soon. And the third item is uh, make sure as you're going through this with the client that you dig down into what the client needs to have. It doesn't matter what you think they need, but let's make sure that the client is able to express themselves. And you may have to ask some probing questions to get there. What, what did I leave out? Well, one of the things that, that we forgot to say, which is there's two really great questions to ask is, what's the matter and what matters to you? Yeah, good. And if you ask those two questions, that those are open-ended questions that will give you a lot of information so that you can listen attentively, be present for the situation, and step into your role as a holistic planner, knowing that a client's darkest moment can very well be your finest hour if you're prepared to um, respond in a complete and um, compassionate way. Okay. And, of course, should you be eager to take a look at a tool that might help you guide your clients to get ahead of these things before they become hardships, Life Goes On Roadmap, the system for personal financial information organization is a powerful tool that hundreds of families have used and raved about. And we would be honored to have you take a closer look and become one of our advocates and champions and users as well. Okay. So um, I think we covered everything we promised. Thank you so much for tuning in and um, doing what you can to be resilient and to guide your clients to be resilient no matter what life happens. My name is Nancy Judden. And I'm Steve Judden. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.